Now we're up to the J3 block, and J3 is straightforward. My arrow direction notation is because I put arrows on my pieces. So my pieces are all laid out, as usual. And my arrow direction was because I had a directional fabric. <clears throat> and I ended up putting the stripe on the 45 degree angle. But when I did that, I just made sure that all my arrows were going in the same direction to make sure that the stripes would be going in the same direction when I put them in their spots. First of all, I'm going to base these inside curves with the notch and glue technique. And then um, I'm going to baste these outside curves with the gathering stitch method. And then I'm going to base the rest of these normally. So I'm going to get busy with this. And then I'm going to attach these to this before I do anything else. So I will get to the basting. All right, so when I do my basting for my inside curb, I'm going to take a, a cut right up to the edge of the paper. And then another one here. And then I'm going to take my glue stick and run it right along here. I'm going to make sure I get the edges too so when the fabric folds over I can stick it down. And then I'm just going to push it over and stick it down. And that's all there is to doing this. The trick is to try not to get it all the way to the paper and then when you stitch it, you want to avoid this, this section. I usually stitch it in like an X to avoid this middle part. I'm going to do that for the other three sides as well. So now I'm going to work on the outside curves. And I basted these tw two different ways. And I started by basting it this way. But I noticed with all the bulk on this, doing this last, I wasn't necessarily going to get an accurate corner here and here because this is less than 90 degrees and it's really hard to get a sharp edge. So what I noticed is that if I did it first, I get a better edge and this is the edge of the block, so it's important to have a straight edge here. So when I basted the last two, I did these two with this edge first and it works a lot better that way. So I'm going to take my outside curve and start with my needle coming through the back because so I have a knot and I want my knot to be on the outside. So then I'm just going to do a gathering stitch starting about here and this is thicker because it's glue basted but then I get back to the single layer and I'm just going to I try to do it towards the edge so I have room to stitch it together on the on the edge of the paper. So I'll do a couple of these and then I'll pull it through and I'll do this all the way around. And once this is done, I will tie off on the front. You want all of your knots to be on the front because that way you can take it out from the front. So it'll, it'll gather as it goes. And then once I get to the end, see I'm getting a little close to the paper there, so I'm going to go back over here. And once I get to the end of this, I'll be able to tie it off. Now when I get here, <clears throat> I'm going to come through as a last stitch. I'm going to have my needle come through the back and then I'm going to put it through right about here-ish and stick it through the paper and then it'll pull it all tight. You want it to be tight enough to be snug but you don't want it to be so tight that it bends your piece up because you can have it where it'll curl your piece up and that's too tight. <clears throat> so you want to have it this way and then what I do at this point is I pull this down and I baste back the other way 
so I make sure that this is snug enough, oops, but not too snug, and then I will take I will take my stiletto and pull this tight so I have a nice edge here. Because that's the edge that you're going to baste. Excuse me, that's the edge you're going to stitch to your other piece. So I will finish this and then I will tie off over here on the stitch that forms and have both of my knots on the same side. Now that I'm at the end of my basting and I'm going through the paper, so this is standard thread basting, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to tie off by making a couple stitches through this paper. And that's how I do my pieces. I'll go through this one more time. And then I have a nice knot so I can see it. There we go. Alright, so now that I've got all of my rounded edges, inside and outside curves, basted, I'm going to put this together. And what you're going to do, obviously, is put the these pieces together. But the trick is, is that you want to make sure that this point is on the edge and I would just go in a little bit, even though this is single piece to single piece, you want to come in and then tie off and then start at the other side. Because if you, if you notice, it's not quite lining up here. But if you start one end and then tie off and then start at the other end and work your way in, then it will be even on the edges and this will all work itself out. Because sometimes this isn't as elegant as it should be. So I will do this, and I'm going to attach all four of these pieces before I worry about these corners. As I'm stitching these together, one of the issues that happens is because of this inside curve, the fabric is kind of pushed up there. There's fabric access here. So I will pull this and then hold it with my thumb so that I can make sure that I stitch to the edge of the paper. If that doesn't happen, then it's going to blouse up and you're going to not be stitching on the edge. So I'm going to make sure that, and that you're, the reason you did this with the, and came back after the gathering stitch and, and basted this down is so you can reduce the blousing on that side. So I'm going to come in here and then make sure that I get this piece and then I'm going to keep going that way. So in this way is how you want to make sure that you've pulled that tight enough as you go. And now that I've gotten enough of this edge, I'm going to tie this off and then start at the other end and then come back to this point to complete it. So then it's connected on both sides. And when you have it connected the right way, you get this effect. So this is actually the edge of the block because your triangles and your arrow points are going to go right here but this is how it should look at this point and I just got to finish putting on the fourth. So I got my whole middle section done and so it should look like this and I'm going to set this aside and now I've got my directional side so I've laid these out in with their respective points. My points are not directional, but my stripes that go with them are. So I'm gonna put these together in groups. And I'm gonna take these, I'm going to baste this one first and then the sides, so that way the tags are gonna be going out in towards the sashings. So I won't have to worry about tags going into this or whatever. It just makes assembly easier. And then these, I'm going to base these, this point and then this side and then I'll do the long sides from there. So I'm going to get one of these based and assembled and then put it on to my centerpiece and I'm, all the time I'm going to make sure that my arrows are all pointing in the same direction. And that's why this part, that's why the arrows are so important. But once I, once I base my triangles, my arrows won't be seen. 
So that's why I want to make sure that I'm working with one piece. One, once I base my triangles, my arrows won't be seen. So that's why I want to make sure that I baste and assemble one section and then attach it all at once and then move on to my second section so I don't get lost. So I've taken my groups of three and I have basted them and put them together one unit at a time. And this unit is going to go up here, whoops, that way, and connect right there. And I've already got this unit attached. And it's a little lopsided, but because this isn't quite lined up, but I will fix that. And when this one goes up here, it will be lined up with the stripes. So I will attach this and work on attaching these. So as you can see, I've got three of my four corners attached to my main block. I just have this one little unit to go. And as I planned, my stripes are all lining up the same way on this block. So this corner is going to line up like this. So they're all going to be this way. And this is kind of fun with this fabric pattern. This is the original piece of fabric that these pieces, these are all going to be the same way. And then these are all going to be the same way. So it works out kind of fun. And now that I've completed all four corners, I have a completed J3 block.